So something a little bit different here I thought we'd just um, have a look inside the box here of this one. We can sort of call this a uh, inbox review if you like. It's it's not really. It's um, If anyone's ever seen this kit, it, on the face of it, it can be quite an attractive um, looking kit because uh, there is no other version of the early Heinkel 111 bombers. Uh, so there is a gap in the market there, which this certainly filled. Uh, this is 172nd kit from Rodin, however um, the box art is about as good as it gets unfortunately. So I thought this would be an interesting um, one to have a look in, just to kind of see what's going on and the sort of things that, um, <laughs> that you can get from a, a really poor a really poor kit sometimes. So please ignore these, I didn't realise they were in there. <coughs> so this is um, the B version. Uh, uh, Rodin have gone on and released the A, B, right the way through uh, to the E, possibly even the F, I'm not sure how far it goes, but um, uh, you've got a mixture, you've got some from the Spanish Civil War, you've got some from the Polish campaign, and you've also got one of the uh, civilian aircraft. So <clears throat> this is very early Heinkel, uh, before it turned into the one that you uh, presumably know from the Battle of Britain. Uh, typical th if you've ever seen a, a Rodin kit, it is it's slightly agricultural. Although the instructions are there's nothing wrong with these, as you can see, they're very um, open, descriptive, very well explained and laid out. No issues as you're going through here, so um, we won't dwell on it. But just to give you an idea, then you've got the par marking options. So you've got two um, Spanish of a War ones from the Legion Condor um, in an overall grey, uh, not even. Um, it's grey all over, even from the uh, the underside as well, so this would be sort of RLM 63 type colour. Um, you do get decals as well. I've taken the decals out of this kit. Um, there's no point really discussing them because I've seen many um, people using road and decals and them just disintegrating when they hit the water, so it is a bit hit and miss. There are um, decals available for this kit, I think Steelwork um, Models, which is a German company. It, it, you, it takes some searching, but you can find them on Google. Uh, they do some replacement decals for different versions that include some Heinkels, and there are a few other options. So if you are planning on, you know, waiting to see the the how, <laughs> waiting to see how this turns out, but if you do plan on getting it, and then your decals are rubbish, um, then there are other alternatives. I have looked at mine, and without testing some, I could test these because I won't be doing this version, so I could test some of these letters. They actually look okay, so that's why I've put them in a protective um, place try and keep them like that but yeah like I said they are notorious so there's the instructions and that's um, a this is a B2 version so these are B1 over here not a lot of differences um, and this has got that splinter camouflage which is um, ROM 63 61 and 62 so it's a, a gray green and brown with um, blue on the underside which is uh, 65 Interesting camouflage. This could have been of this is the sort of version that would have been used in Poland, so in 1939, and then they were taken off frontline use. So as we get into the kit, um, I have taken parts off the sprue here. Um, this is a, a, a kit I got sort of second hand, so let's get some of this out of the way. We'll have a look at the different sprues in a bit. The thing we want to sort of get to is why this kit is so notorious for being um, really quite poor and a little bit of a problem. And that is because, for some reason, as you can see, these make up your fuselage half. So you've got the fuselage split into five different bits. Now that's probably due to Rodin deciding on releasing many different versions, and obviously if you wanted to do the later Heinkel, where it then goes over into a, a sort of uh, proper nose of glass, well then you'd have to keep that separate, but even even that I'm not sure you, it's actually possible because there's quite a lot of differences than just the glazing at the front. Um, let's get some tape because there's there's a few problems here. Now you, you won't see many of these built up. I think there's a handful of builds that I've seen on the internet because this is a kit that really does break the, um, the best of us, I'm afraid. It's that bad. Uh, the ones I have seen have just about got it together. Um, there's there's a sort of mixture. Unfortunately, it's like that on that modelling madness site. So um, although the kit's built, you can barely see it because the pictures are so terrible. Um, but if you if you search it into Google, there is a build on Brit Modeler that goes so far before the chap decided to give up, and he does actually show some useful um, 
some useful hacks for, for getting to the stage he gets to, which, ironically, he seems to have got past the worst of it and then um, not followed it up. Uh, there's also a completed build of this on the Steelwork website, as I said. I think he, he describes it taking eight years for him to uh, get the kit finished. So that's what you're dealing with. I will be building this one day. Uh, but already I said that a year ago and I haven't even started yet, so you've got to be in the right mood. I think the way to do this is, is take a long time about it, not try and get everything perfect, just try and get the, get the damn thing together and hope for the best. So um, that's not too bad from a short, we call this short run, it's not really Roden, they're, they're a bit... bit you know, a bit more ahead of short run kits, but I suppose you've got to class them as that. Um, it's it's sort of two things going on here. You've got a huge amount of detail. The panel lines are really well done. There's riveting all over the tail and the fin here. There's brilliant interior detail. It really is good for a 172nd scale kit. And this came out, I think, early 2000s. This, you've got lots of moulded on sidewall detail, which in fact, for moulded on, it's actually really quite good. As you can see there. I don't know whether that will pick up, but there are some nice uh, rivets. The whole thing is riveted incredibly with very very scaled down rivets the unfortunate thing is um to build the kit you're going to absolutely obliterate most of it and then putting all of that back in is going to be a bit of a pain but as you can see so um you know a way to do this i would i would think you've got <laughs> you already see what's happening here it doesn't really line up even slightly um if you can see that there you know if you've got you've got to get the wing root lined up and it's going to take some it's going to take some work. I've already sanded some of this apart, but let's go on. I'll, I'll keep taping this together. So hopefully this will be of interest. I'm sure some of you may have these in your stash. I think I saw somewhere when it when it was being released, there was um, a lot of people got excited and uh, a group build started, <laughs> which quickly ended but, uh, once they got into the kit. But... Um, as I say, you know, this is one of the kits, if you put the time and effort in, there's there's really no other choice, and I don't think there's going to be many around either. Um, so that's what you sort of get there, and then that's going to join on here, which I think, you know, as bad as it is, certainly doable. Um, nothing about this kit is unbuildable. I mean, it's, you're, 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 you're leaps and bounds ahead than if you were going to actually scratch build this. But... You know, it's going to take some work, so you've got that. Now, one of the main issues is you have to actually open this out so that the glazing fits. Now, I'm not sure that's actually the case, because I'm in some test fitting I've been doing here. I think you could actually get away with this on my kit. I think if you glue it down on both sides... Well, no. No, I mean, I'm talking rubbish here, as you can see. As it splays itself open, you, you can't get those two to get. I suppose you might be able to. Yeah, you can. Yes, this is what I did. Sorry, I've done this before. So I think you could get away with that. I think you could. You might have to sand the edges down. So if you masked up the windows first, then sort of sanded through, I think you'd be all right blending that in. So that's one thing. So we don't need to worry about that. Uh, some of the builds on the internet do mention how the canopy doesn't fit. But like I said, there's different versions of this. Uh, so they could be talking about a different one. Now, We've got the fifth part is this bit here, and this really doesn't fit in any real sense of the word. So let's uh, tape that up, and then you'll start to see what we're looking at. <coughs> Hopefully this is of interest. I haven't got a lot going on on the channel at the minute, so I thought, well, if we have a look at this. I was going to do an inbox review, but I've started to feel they're relatively useless, unless you actually try and build the kit. Um... And as much as I'm going to build a lot of the stuff I review, you know, it might be six months apart, so that really doesn't sort of, doesn't give you a lot to go on. So, that's one part there, which, oh, it's not going to fit very well, but again, you know, you're just going to have to sand through that. It's going to come on with a bit of an overlap of a join here, so you're just going to have to blast through that. And then this bit, sort of clamps on there, so, I must admit, it's probably not as bad as I have seen on the internet. I'm sure I'll probably realise when I come to build the thing that it is a bit... It's a bit... It's not quite as straightforward as this looks, but... Well, what have we got there? I think we're alright. Let's, let's pull a piece back here. Well, let's wrap 
it round. Ooh, I think we can get in there. Yep. And then pull it on back. So what are we looking at there? Okay, well, I don't think that's too bad, actually. God, you know what? I might actually be having a go at this sooner than I thought. Um, let's clamp that down there as well. Yeah, if you are interested in this, have a look at some of the builds. Uh, type this one into Google. This is the 172nd Roden Heinkel 111B. And just have a look at the sort of thing that people have had to sort of go through when they build it. Obviously, there's a lot of interior to go in here, which might um, cock things up a bit. But even so, uh, as long as you keep test fitting, um, I think you're going to be all right. I would suggest probably getting these two bits joined onto this fuselage when it's flat. So just push them together, glue them up like that, so at least they're sound and true to each other. And then worry about getting those true as you go across like that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the wings. Now they have a slightly curious way of going about things. Hang on, let's get the right one. So you've got this, um, they've left the flaps and ailerons moulded into uh, the lower part. And then you're going to put the upper part on. Now you might be able to see just how rough that edge is, but I think if it's sanded up... In fact, I have sanded this one up, so let's do this one. So I've straightened that edge up, as you can see. That's just flash, so it's not really anything to worry about too much. Um, again, you're going to be wanting to really try and keep sanding to a minimum, so test fit, test fit, test fit here. And you're going to probably end up with something a little bit better than if you just kind of glue it together and then have to obliterate it through sanding. What am I doing here? That's not really helped us, is it? Um, so, here, that's going to slot into there. So, I need to get some of this tape off. Stupidly, there we go, that's helped us. We can come back with that piece in a minute. So, they're going to go on and slot in like that. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean it's going to take a bit of work, but again, it's not. I'm going to say it's not terrible. I mean, it is terrible, but it's not um, beyond the realms of what we're talking about, what to expect. Um, so what have we got here? I think. Yeah, I think you know, with a fair amount of maybe some plastic card shims, I think we might be all right there. I'll tell you where the next issue comes from in a minute. I haven't checked this bit. Um, what have we got there? It's not actually too bad there. Oh, I can't see if it's in focus or not. Um, yes. I mean, there are going to be problems there, but once this is all trued up and this is uh, sort of got together as well, you might be all right. Now, there is a, a major issue comes from um, putting the wheel wells in. They just don't fit. So, uh, in the instructions, you've got this whole section, very highly detailed, this box here. So, you make up a box for the undercarriage like that, and then it slots in to the wing here and then with the uh, blank, well there's the sort of start of the engine they sell goes in and blocks it all off. This does not fit at all. There is a huge gap if you put that in so you have to really, um, I mean it's just too deep here so you have to probably measure that and then build it around it so that it shuts because uh, they're quite a lot wider than what this needs and for the B1 version, which is what I'd be doing, I need to cut off these, I suppose they're radiator vents or, or something. Um, and I'd imagine they'd want to go flush, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I'm just going to take out some of these uh, sidewalls here for the... Uh, what have we got here? For the... Wheel... Whale bays. Let's have a look. Where are we? So... Let's see the sort of thing we're dealing with. Um, I think we are... Might be able to do it here. I think we're already way too deep with that. Oh! 
Well, here you go. So, look, right. Well, hang on, I shouldn't speak too soon. <laughs> Let me just get these bits in it. Um, maybe some of these online builds, and now this is a, this is something for us all to take note, some of these inbox reviews, online builds, and all the rest of it. I'm not sure this is going to be as much of an issue as I've seen. I haven't sanded any of the parts yet, and that is... Um, I actually knew which way it's going to be going. Well, it's got to fit one way, isn't it? It's that way, so... Um, well, that's all right, isn't it? A bit of sanding. God, the one I saw on um, the internet, this was, I mean, there was just no way you were going to clamp the wing together with, with that structure in. Now, granted, uh, this may, this may add to it here, because you've got, you've got to put it on like that. Sort of affair, like that. Hang on, no, it's like that. Oh, come on, Jason. Right. <laughs> and I'm the one here speaking from authority, and I don't know which side that's going to go on at all. Uh, but r what I'm saying is, um, there's a flange there, and these sit in it, so you're going to have more depth from that by whatever that is, about a millimetre, something like that. So there's an extra mil to think about. But you could easily just slice those off and, and butt join them on if that was going to be an issue, and then sand it all back as well. So I think with test fit here, I don't think that would be an issue either, which is surprising, because that really is the major problem on most of it. So that's going to slide in like that. And as you can see, what I mean from the detail, um, that's pretty good, isn't it? So it's going to be worth the work. Um, so with that in there... 13, 14, I know what I've done, I've cut off the wrong ones, haven't I? But uh, we're, we're, we'll go with it, because this will give us an idea. I'll just take that down, like that. There we go. Yeah, so that is going to foul it a little bit. It's going to be hard to clamp that down, so I only think you're going to need to remove probably like that bit there. So, again, that's pretty good. Uh, here you can see the amount of detail that's inside the fuselage as well. So we've got the whole... Um, here we've got uh, all of the cockpit detail. So you've got uh, an actual cockpit obviously there. Then you've got all of the bombing area as well. And then you've got this rear part as well where the actual um, gunner is. So you have got detail running all the way back through here from the cockpit back to here so that is useful as well that's that's one thing at least you don't have to worry about making all of that up of course fit issues might be a problem but um i think it's going to be okay to be honest i have bad mouth this kit a little bit and i'm thinking it's it's actually not going to be as bad as i thought even the clear parts aren't terrible for what you would expect from rodan uh, this is old rodan as well i know they've really come on quite well in in recent years Hmm. Right, well, there you go. Hopefully that was of interest. Uh, there's not much more to show you, because once the fuselage and wings are together, I mean, the rest of it is it is what it is. I mean, um, it'll come together one way or another. The engine nacelles may be an issue. Uh, but again, they, they're not lacking for detail. And I would imagine that's... If you can get this far, you can get as far as the, the engine nacelles, you're not going to be worrying about them. So that's... That's that. And this is the whole sprue with the bombs and the bomb bay for the uh, the actual aircraft as well. So, an interesting kit, something a bit different, something that you still see around at shows uh, these days, um, and it is quite tempting. So, maybe look a bit deeper in the box if you're looking at some of the other options. But certainly the B option. Well, it looks to be the best of 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 the ones that I've seen so far anyway so um, I'm gonna probably have this one ticking on in the background so again no promises like the rest of it I've got plenty on the go here none of it is abandoned it <laughs> it will come on the channel at some point but you know th these things take time I think I'm gonna have this one ticking on in the background as well because it would be a very nice one to uh, to have finished but you're gonna need to take your time and 
take a deep breath before jumping in. So that is the Roden 172nd Heinkel 111B, uh, the Pedro, which was its Spanish nickname. It is a 005 uh, kit number. So if you're interested in it, like I say, check out Steelworks. I'll put the link um, in the description below. Um, check out Scalemates to see the run of these as well. I'll also put that link down below. Thanks for keeping up with the channel and thanks for all the uh, comments that I get as, as well. I read all of them, so um, keep that up because uh, you know it's nice to get the interaction with the audience as well. So uh, I'll see you in the next video.